So I've got my flour broken up into little chunks. I've made sure that my torch is topped off. Got everything nice and clean and ready to go. What I don't have is parchment paper, but I'll grab that. It's already over here. Um, any kind of parchment works works fine. Um, I like to use. I have some smaller pieces. I can do my little smaller pieces. Oh, here they are over here. I like to use. What? Oh, here it is. Here, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, Reynolds wrap is my favorite. But as long as you got some parchment, it doesn't really matter. Okay. We're going to go ahead and just going to. I like to just cut it in strips right off the roll. And then what I'll do as I need it, I'll just cut a little piece off as needed. I like the Reynolds wrap because it has the markings. You can't see it right now, but it has little markings on it, measurement markings where you can make your cuts nice and even. Okay, so what I'm going to do is load this slug up. And we're going to heat for probably a minute and 30 seconds. See where that gets us. Two minutes of, of heat time is your maximum. So we want to... I haven't used this torch. Uh, well, I've used the torch, but I haven't used the deuce in a while. So uh, I'm not sure I ha how this flame is going to work. So this will be a good, uh, a good test on how to adjust your flame if need be. You get a new torch, you need to adjust it. This will kind of give you an idea of how to do it. So two minutes is the max. I'm going to go for one minute and 30 seconds and uh, base my judgment on how the rosin comes out. So if it comes out hot, snack, you know, crackling and popping and smoking, then I know that I need to turn my flame down um, for sure. So let's uh, get going. I've got The Dude Grows on YouTube. The Dude Grows on YouTube is a pretty good channel. They, they mainly talk about indoor stuff, but you know what? It's cannabis. They, they talk all cannabis there. It's a great channel. We're going to listen to them while I load this up. And uh, growers on Discord or we'll get on going dudegrows .com in the comments has been sick. So, like a good kind of sick, right? Like a sick like your 15-year-old says. Man, yeah. Sick. Yeah. It's sick. Uh, the kids still say killer. <laughs> lit. Lit. It's going to... It's, it, it, when you hang out over on the TVC Discord and we support the show, it's really lit over there. Oh, yeah. If that works. Yeah. It works great. <laughs> All right. Let's get into the show here, man. Let's see who's growing some dank. Yes, sir. Zero to Hero by Govi Glassworks. It says, um, the dude, Mr. Scotty and Sir Guru. Hang on. Thank you, guys. Hang on, man. Mr. Scotty. I like that, bro. I like that. I, when people call me Sir, I correct them. I'm kind of digging on the Sir Guru. I uh, like it. I'm more of a bro. I'm like, hey, by the way, somebody left a Guru Energy drink in my house, man. I'm calling them. <laughs> I'm calling them. I'm sorry. Go for it, dude. Oh, he's just laughing. I saw those at Whole Foods. Remember, all right. I says, I want to thank you guys for the foresight to get the DVC together and have all this wealth of information available for everyone. I just believe that thanks to stumbling upon your show and watching it religiously without a large base of experience has mattered, has not mattered, as I still have retained more grow knowledge than most of my friends with multiple trial and error experiences. And I'm able to help improve my friends. That's what it's about, dude. Growers helping growers, families, and more importantly, my own success. Thanks for listening to your show and reading lots of books. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, much appreciated. Now let's get to the, uh, the growing. My first indoor experience was an absolute pleasure. The strain was a gift of Barney's Farm Gorilla Skittles. I was using a 200 watt quantum board in Roots Organic 707 soil, GEO, which is General Organics Nutrients, great white. He says, I wish it was recharged just so you could, he could fill in for you there, Scotty. I would hey, I wonder where he's at. Keep it simple enough and ex exponentially, especially clean. What a pleasure it is to enjoy and share the fruits of my labor guilt free, knowing all the inputs along with personal control of the environment. And I can say wholeheartedly that this is pure medicine in the, for the mind, body, and soul. Much love to the DGC. Thank you guys. Keep up the good work. Never stop talking. I hope not. Usually, 
I'd say I would enjoy talking 99% of the time, which is pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Lou, look at this frick. I love the colors on this butt. Those leaves are beautiful fall colors, and holy cow. Look, he's got some nice nugs yeah, there. it's gorgeous. Okay, so we are going to use the seep kit. I have the forge loaded and ready to go. These little scraps right here, I'm just going to eat these. I'm just not going to even mess with them. Gonna get my daily dose of THCA. Okay, you see how the forge, this is a good point to bring up here. See how it kinda tilting a little bit? That's normal. And that is not a big deal, but that's because the flower is poking out the side. But if your flower is real soft, you can turn your forge around and load it from this side. Put your seep kit in first. And then this end will look like this end. And the nice thing is when you go to set it down, it sets nice and flat. It's not something you have to do. No big deal. Okay. Just a little tip. I do like the reverse load, but I found out that it's a little more difficult to do if your flower is, is real dense and hard. If you got a real soft flower, then you can, um, the reverse load works fantastic. Okay, we're also going to use the seep kit, which consists of two things. Now, I don't have to use the seep kit. The, the slug 33, your, your slug 33 will work perfect without it. Okay, the, the seep kit is nice because it really eliminates cleaning the plunger and the inside of your forge. So that goes in last on top of the flower. I'm just going to tuck that in there. It's a silicone disc. And then we have to use this. This is just, just copper washer. And that's going to go on the spacer. It doesn't matter how it goes on. It can go on before, it can go on after. As long as this goes on, that's all that matters. I like to put it on first. Okay. So now I'm ready to go. I've got the forge loaded. Seep kit in. I've got my copper washer on. Now I'm going to push this in a little bit. Just get my... Get my plunger seated in there. And then one thing I've got to do is make a little a lip here to catch the rosin. Okay, I don't need the stubby pressing plate. Get rid of that. Now if you have a vise that has like knurling for grip on the plates, you can turn these plates around. They're attached with two Allen screws and just turn these plates around to give you a smooth pressing surface because that's what we want. We want a smooth pressing surface. If you're not able to do that, then you can just pick up one of these on our website and boom, there you go. And then you can even epoxy this right to the vise you want to use just to make it easier. Um, so that'll handle that for you. So I got my lip made here to catch the rosin. I'm going to put that right in the middle. Now I'm going to take my forge. Now I got to press down a little bit and hold it flush. And I'm going to tighten it. Actually, what I want to do is I'm going to scoot the forge just right up to the very edge here. I want it to be right at the right at the edge. Okay. Make sure it's seating properly, which it shouldn't be a problem. It should automatically just seat nice and flat there. Okay. Set this here. Now. Just in the front. The deuce and the uh, original one gram unit are made to be used horizontally. So, which is nice. It makes them super um, easy. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot easier to acquire a, uh, a vice that works horizontally. You can get these vices that flip up vertically too. We sell those on our website. You can also get them online. But um, with the deuce, you really don't need that or the original. They're designed to work in a horizontal fashion. All right, so I've got everything ready. Let's 
turn the timer on here. Oh, gee, am I out of... Okay, so now this was a mistake. My iPhone has a dead battery. Let me go over here on my computer and pull up my timer. One minute in, I'm going to turn the vise, tighten up that flower a little bit. There we go. I like to heat the back end of the forge. Stay away from the paper. Heat the rear end. Also, you're driving the flower away from the heat source, which is what we want to do. There it is, minute 30 seconds, and we're gonna finish. You're always done compressing, or a heating, before you're done compressing. So your heat cycle will always be done first. I already see some rosin. Forge will pop back just like that. It's normal. And then just snug it up. You see you hear a little bit of bubbling, a little bit of crackling. That's perfect. It's just what you want. Take my heat, my hot strap. Open it up. Let me zoom back out here. Now we're going in. Make sure your strap, just tuck it in carefully right underneath. And then applying pressure against your back plate just a little bit to hold it. Release your forge. Gently slide up. I like to put my finger on the back if I can there. Oh, that was nice. Let me take this off. Take your puck off of here. Just like that. And wow. That's the deuce for you. That is the two gram deuce. I mean, the thing just performs. Well, they all do. I don't know. I get it. You know, I use the Fat Mac. That's my favorite. Then I use the wine gram. That's my favorite. And I use the deuce. I can't make up my mind. But I just, something about the deuce. Something about it. I don't know. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. They each have their advantage. You know, the deuce gives you a nice yield for, for you know, a bigger yield, of course, than the one gram. But yet, the one gram is nice because it's the highest yielder of all of them. And it's the more most versatile. Slug 33 because they all have to be loaded to capacity. So if it came down to it, you were stranded on a desert island and all you had was a torch and a vice and your slug 33 and some weed, or they say you only had, you know, uh, two grams of, or less than two grams. You know, the, uh, the, um, 
the deuce would be worthless and so would the uh, uh, the fat max so you know and then I like the fat Mac because it does the vertical extractions I you know there's something I like about that just the vertical so you know whatever take your pick you'll be happy with it with any of them so now it's time to wipe this thing off I'll show you how easy it is to clean your slug 33 I'm just rambling on let's get to work okay let's give it a wipe double up on your paper towel because it's kind of hot still okay and there we go I hope you can see that I mean, there we go now we're clean and ready to go and then I will set it just like this that's how you set your slug 33 when, you, when it needs to cool off just like that you can actually just set it right up on here and then in you know 20 minutes or so 30 minutes it'll be cooled off and you can do another extraction oh one minute and 30 seconds was just i got lucky perfect probably could cut down maybe just 15 seconds off of that if, if i wanted to just you know, but looking at your puck can also make a difference. You want to make sure that you don't have too much flaring. That was the right amount of material. Okay. If operated right, if you have used the right amount of material, you won't have this, you know, the slug 33 is not going to produce a blowout. Okay, blowouts are only created or only happen if we compress too slowly or um, our heat, we haven't heated enough, we've underheated and the flour hasn't been able to soften uh, enough to compress into this area. The flour has to be heated enough and softened enough to where it will compress into the puck. If it's underheated, it's not going to happen, okay? the flour material will start to come out the side. Another way to prevent a blowout is just, um, if you are having an issue with a blowout, uh, is just after the forge pops back from the vise, you want to compress really slow. Just go real slow and give that flour time to compress into the, the area. Don't rush it. And um, that's the ticket. So... Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about regarding the deuce and what what uh, what it can do, what it can't do, or if you just need any tips or just have general questions, uh, put them down in the comments. I'll answer them for you. I'd love to do that. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the uh, notification button. That way, when I do an, uh, an extraction, or uh, you'll always be notified and you won't miss any. So thanks for watching. Peace. We'll see you next time.